in the last lecture we discussed the different fundamental formula which are applicable in the working of the transformer and how to utilize those formulae to design a transformer. Now today we will be discussing how to model the transformer, how to do the modeling of the transformer. Modeling is very important. Why? What you want by modeling is, we'll make such a circuit of the transformer which can be solved by computer software. Why that is required? Because this transformer we know is being used in the power supply system, that means transmission line, distribution line. It is being used in different plants to actually find out how this whole transmission line, distribution line will be working, we will have to simulate the whole transmission, distribution line, transformer, generator, so that we can use it for finding out or forecast the performance of the whole system beforehand. We can predict if you give such and such input to the whole system of transmission distribution, what will be the actually output from the whole system. That means how much power at which frequency will be receiving it at the receiving end. By modeling, we can simulate the performance of the transformer. We can know the we can know or predict the performance of the transformer just using different software available. But before that, we should represent the transformer by an equivalent circuit which can be solved by computational technique. So, by doing this thing, we will have to find out the equivalent circuit of the transformer. So, we will have to find out the equivalent circuit of the transformer which can be solved by our computational technique. So for making this thing, let us quickly see or review why, how many voltages are involved at different parts of the transformer. When transformer is working, how many voltages are involved? First voltage is your, this voltage that is applied voltage. So this applied voltage is there in the primary side. Now there will be an induced voltage at the primary and induced voltage at the secondary. Induced voltage in the primary will be counterbalancing this applied voltage. So this voltage, induced voltage at the primary will be opposing this V1. So it will be in phase opposition. So I can write E1 will be in phase opposition induced voltage induced voltage into EMF at the primary if I represent it by phasor diagram if this is my V1 my E1 will be opposing it of almost same value this will be my E1. So same will be E2 also. E2 also will be induced voltage. Induced EMF at secondary. And that will be same flux is producing E1 and E2. So E1 and E2 will be of same phase. It will be opposing this, this E2 will be in the same phase of E1. So other than this, when there is a coil at the primary and coil at the secondary, coil will have some resistance. 
that resistance when current is flowing through it, there will be some resistive drop. So there will be IR drop, I into R. In the primary, it will be I1 into R1. In the secondary, it will be I2 into R2. That is called resistive drop. So this voltage will be there, that will be I into R, current into resistance. Now we know that this, when you give this voltage V1, when we supply the voltage V1, when current will be flowing through a resistance, the current I will be in the same phase of voltage. The voltage and current will be in the same phase for a resistive supply, resistive uh, component. So this I will be in phase with V1 and resistive drop I into R also will be having the same phase with the applied voltage. Now there will be, I told you, there is a leakage, resist leakage reactance which is occurring due to the leakage flux at the primary and leakage flux at the secondary. So when leakage flux, how leakage flux is generated? When current is flowing through a coil, that with the inductor, this leakage flux is getting generated. So this leakage flux current into I will be the leakage reactance drop. That means we call leakage reactance drop. If I have got a current, please keep it in mind, when you apply some voltage V, your current passing through an inductor is 90 degree lagging behind, so your magnetizing current will be lagging behind voltage by uh, this I. Now this inductor, when there will be a voltage drop in an inductor, there will be a again lagging voltage. That means XL into I, I into XL will be lagging behind your lagging behind your current X. This voltage drop will be lagging behind this I by a 90 degree. So this will be the leakage voltage drop. At the primary it will be I1 X1 and the secondary it will be I2 X2. So these are the main voltage drop which is occurring at the transformer. So after this only I want to mention that here we have only indicated the voltage drop which is occurring in this which is figuring in this picture. But over and above that there is another current element which is actually producing, we represent the flux producing element. That is first is your magnetizing current, say how flux is produced? When current passes through an inductor, it produces a flux. Inductor means it, pro it uh, having coils. So when it is passing through a coil, flux is getting produced. So flux will be getting produced when current will be passing through a coil. So this current we call magnetizing current IM and its inductance we call magnetizing inductance XM. Now as soon as flux is produced, you know, this iron core is there, steel core, it is made of steel, steel core is there. When flux is generated and passing through the steel core, as the flux is a changing flux sinusoidally, varying flux, it will cause losses in the core. First loss is eddy current loss, which is when flux will be changing. Not only voltage will be induced at the coil, it will be induced at this iron core also. This induced voltage will drive a current through this iron path and produce the same I square R loss, that means heating loss inside this, that is called eddy current loss. Other than this, there will be a hysteresis loss. As this flux is changing sinusoidally, 
it is a cyclic change there will be a hysteresis loop. that means flux will be changing like this it will be increasing like this coming down like this again increasing like this so there will be a hysteresis loop this is b this is h so the one one cycle is complete this much of energy you know energy contained in the magnetic will have b h b into h so this much of energy will be lost so that is called hysteresis loss both these losses will occur what is the effect of this loss the effect of this loss is heating the core that means heating the iron core on which this primary coil and secondary coil have been mounted so this core what will be this thing this core will have the losses because of this fluxes now this loss in a, if i want to represent this loss in an electrical circuit there is only one electrical element which causes loss that is resistance so what you will do some current is passing through the resistance so i can make this thing representative a resistance and representative current so that i square r loss of this total core loss will be equal to i square r of this representative resistance and current so what we do is whatever this current is coming we passes through a two parallel path one is a resistant path and another is a coil this is producing magnetic field and this will be account for the losses caused by the magnetic field this total this current we call ic that means core loss current and total current will be i0 that means the current which will be passing only to generate the flux in the machine so in this transformer flux will be generated by this mechanism so this mechanism xm and rc will be representing the magnetizations of the core and this other resistance and leakage reactance will be representing the resistance and leakage reactance of the primary and secondary coil so with this knowledge we will be developing in our next lecture the equivalence circuit of the transformer